Hello everyone, Coach Timmy here with Hybrid House and Brand Performance. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Monday. I am here with Talise. Talise, can you introduce yourself to our audience and tell them a little bit about what you do? Hi everybody, my name is Talise Bernbach and I'm a sport performance psychology consultant and a mental performance coach. So I help athletes, coaches, teams, even executives, artistic performers identify their mental performance barriers, what's going on up here that's impeding their athletic performances. Okay, great. So, so just so you guys know, I, I, I just met Talise. We just met online during this, um, this time that our, that our world <laughs> kind of lives online. A mutual friend hooked us up, um, me being the coaching and physical side of, of this athlete's um, uh, goals and training and accomplishments and then Talise Spring being more of the mental side of what she was going through and she in speaking with both of us and getting to know both of us thought why not combine your two worlds um, I coach mostly um, whether you're beginner intermediate or advanced athletes that are uh, kind of in their second time around or maybe their first time ever being an athlete in uh, but they're a little bit older than than maybe your stereotypical young athlete and um, and Talise works with 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 a lot of athletes, so she thought, why not get you two together? I'm sure that your that your worlds would combine and, and really help a lot of people. So that's why we're hopping on today. Um, I really wanted her to come on and talk a little bit about what she does and um, and uh, what she can do for for you guys um, and the athletes that that I'm around and myself included. So so Talise, why athletic coaching? So, you know, I always grew up loving sports, watching and playing sports, and people have always intrigued me. So I kind of hooked up with sport performance psychology, and I thought it was a great fit for my second career, because this is actually my second career. And I also remembered very early on, because I was a very competitive athlete in uh, volleyball and softball. And I always remembered early on, like how powerful my mind was and how influential it was when I was out on the field. I mean, I would literally get linear focus and watch the ball. I remember to this day watching the ball coming and hitting the bat. I just remember the power of my mind in this whole entire process. And I, I just, I identified that that is, is really, really an important component. It could make or break my performance. And so I early, learned early on the power of the mind because the mind tells the body what to do. If the mind tells the body what to do, you know, we, so many people say uh, their performance, 90% of their performance depends on their uh, mental mindset, their outlook, but spend little to no time training the mind. And so that was, that was really important. And so I thought I'd marry the two, you know, my love of people, because people are very, very intriguing and my love of the sport. I love that. I, I, I love that. And I think it's, it's very true that, that your, your body can only do what your mind tells it to do. So we can physically, which is where I kind of my world lives, we can physically push and grind and recover and, um, and fuel our bodies with good nutrition and, and expect a, a, a high performance output physically but what does any of that mean if you're questioning yourself in your head or have some of these obstacles come up um it kind of you're right they really do go hand in hand, hand. so what one thing i'd like to add too is you know how you need to recoup your your physical body your physical muscles right the mental also needs a break the mental needs to be rejuvenated it needs to learn tools it needs to uh, learn how to optimize its performance as well and so we we spend so much time on the physical components of our accomplishments or our sports or our athleticism when the mind is actually the driving force behind all of it. Yeah, that so. makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So what, what, because you deal with the power of the mind and the mind, what are some obstacles, you know, I can think physically, what are some obstacles people face? And, and, and every time, that these come up with my with my clients or or those that I coach, it's always related to something that's going on up here. So it's again, it's really interesting talking to you because I'll never get an answer to the physical without having it be something that's going on with that person. 
life stressors, whatever it is. So what are the main obstacles that you, that your athletes deal with that where you can really provide help? Well, one important component that you said is like, as a coach, you're looking at your athlete and you're going, ah, it sounds just not right today. They are off. Right. And so it's the mental, it's the mental component. But so there's things called mental performance barriers. And through my 12 years of working, I've identified what the mental performance barriers are. And they're things such as fear of success, fear of failure, lack of motivation, low confidence, negative self-talk, um, pressure, judgment. There's so many things, burnout. So there are so many lists. I mean, I could just, I think there's, there's quite a few of them, but there are a lot of things, anything that restricts our thinking, that makes our brain go no and shrink, not for focus, because when you focus, you've got broad focus and, and small focus, wide. That's like when you run a marathon, it's going to go large focus, wide focus, and it's going to go narrow focus. Because, and as you get more stressed, you need to bring the focus in because you need to go more internal in order to get the per external performance you want. That, that's another topic, but it just gives you an idea of the power of the brain overcoming the mental obstacles and stuff too. But mental performance, um, anything that restricts it, keeps you limited, keeps you small, brings in fear, anxiety, pressure, any of those things make the brain smaller. You cannot perform when things are shriveling and shrinking and are, are they're just smaller. So if you are, um, like we had talked before to me about threat and challenge. So when we, there's a threat, we shrivel, right? We shrink, we come back. We cannot, our brain cannot perform optimally when we are feeling threatened. Now, when we're challenged, we're opening up. We always need to open up creativity, um, openness, positivity, all of that stuff helps us perform better. So would you, would if a, if an athlete was feeling threatened and, and you were asking them maybe certain questions and you could tell they were feeling threatened would you try to turn them from feeling threatened into feeling challenged like is there work to be done to shift how maybe the same thing feels to that person first well the key is self-awareness always 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 so most of the time so if i give an athlete a questionnaire about their about their uh performance right a performance questionnaire Right. It is amazing what comes out. So self-awareness is key because there's three things. An athlete is either using their brain to help them. They're using their brain to hurt them or they're neutral and they're not using it at all. And I call that lazy brain. Mm -hmm. It's the best asset we have. So all elite athletes, the majority of elite athletes have used how to harness this power and energy to bring them to another level. Right. So when you, so when you ask these athletes questions, because I've even been told in my mentorship to me, cause I'm such a talker, stop talking, ask more questions, ask more questions. It's truly how you get somebody to help and ultimately help themselves. Cause we can't do that for them. So what are some questions that you ask? Like, what are some of the things that you ask to try to learn more about your athletes and, and, and also have them probably learn more about themselves? So in my questionnaire, which gives me a lot of insight, is like, why are you doing this sport? Why are you getting up at 4 a.m.? Why are you getting up at 5 a.m.? What is your why? Is your why a healthy why? Are you coming from a place of restriction? Are you coming from a place of duty? Are you coming from a place of pure joy, a challenge, right? So first I need to understand what's your why. And then I ask about what are your challenges? What are your physical challenges? What are your mental challenges? Are you having a hard time learning something? Because learning a new skill physically affects the mental, right? So we attack learning the new physical skill with a mental component behind it. Right. So I learn about their perception. What are, where are they at with their, with their performance? Where are they at with their sport? You know, and then that gives me insight to be able to just identify what their mental performance barriers are. I'm like, because I've been doing this for a while, so I can go, oh, that's this, that's this, that's <laughs> this. And then I just decide on their personality as I work with them, which way I want to go. Are they more direct? Are they more on the side? You know, what their personality is. So then we can overcome those mental performance barriers. So the questions really are about their perception because I have to meet them at their perception. It doesn't matter what my perception is. I have to ask questions. And, and one of the things too is I'm genuinely interested in what you have to say. Like, I really want to know, I really want to get you to the next level. I want you to be happy. I want you to enjoy your sport. 
I want you to be doing it for the right reason. On the flip side of that too, let's say I'm working with you, Timmy, and I discover, man, this isn't a healthy mix. You're not really having fun. You know, I've had some athletes that I work with, they wake up and they're like, you know what? This isn't where I want to be. I'm doing it for all the wrong reasons. And then they, they, it's, it's, and I'm, that's great. I will support you as long as you want to do this sport and it's healthy to do this sport. So sometimes in your questions, you might even get an athlete that says, oh man, like, I don't, I don't know why I'm doing this or, or I'm not enjoying it. I'm not having fun, which, which you and I, I think both believe that that's key for living a long term mm-hmm. life is enjoying yeah. what you're doing. So they might not even know it. And by the questions you ask and the work you do, that, that person might come to the conclusion that they don't, that once they figure out their why, maybe it's not even something that's bringing them joy. Right. And so one thing we do then is we flip it and bring them the joy back. Right. So it, just because you're not having joy at the moment doesn't mean you can't ever have that again. That happens a lot. So if I, for example, I worked with Uh, you know, everything comes in cycles. So I'll get a ton of swimmers. I love working with swimmers because there's a direct correlation. We can see the mental directly affect performance because uh, seconds get shaved off, you know, and seconds in swimming is huge. But I had one girl come to me. I loved working with her and she came to me and she was, uh, she was trying out for the Olympic team and she was a shoe, shoe in, but she was not, she was not performing. And her coach called me. I always get those calls. Uh, she's not performing. I'm like, ah, okay. Mm-hmm. So she wasn't performing and she came and I just, the way she looked, she was so rigid. You could tell her mind was rigid too. So I said, okay, forget everything. Get in the pool and start swimming. So of course, what does she do? She starts doing laps. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I want you to do flips. I want you to feel the water going over your body. The point is, is our sport becomes our identity and we lose touch with the sport we lose touch with the fun of it, right? So I'm a swimmer, that's it, I'm a performer, I gotta perform, and then everything else goes to the side. So you have to be very, very careful of really still maintaining your identity. So she got in the water, it took her probably five to 10 minutes before she could actually even do a somersault in the water. I said, no, she came, did one somersault, came back and I said, no, you go swim, you smell the chlorine, you feel the water, the air in your lungs, all of it. You fall back in love with it, you start, just getting the, the shackles of this sport. This sport has become like shackles on you. So, do you, you know, that's really interesting for me just personally to hear, you know, your sport becomes your identity and we, we, we lose touch with the actual sport. I can totally relate to that. Um, definitely. And, and also you saying that there's moments, um, which I think is true in life and relationships and everything. There, there's, there's really, really high moments, some low moments, things kind of ebb and flow. And I definitely relate to that personally in my sport. I've had times where I'm like, why am I doing it? And I haven't enjoyed it, but it's not for the long haul. And maybe it's just like you said, a moment, maybe there was a race that took it out of me or, but I think, I, do, it's, do you believe that if somebody truly falls back in love with the sport and enjoys it again, like your swimmer playing in the water, does that equal better performance? Oh, absolutely. Because you have a different relationship with your sport. You, you should, it's just like a relationship. Like I think we've talked about before, you have a relationship. We have a relationship with our workout program, with our sport, with our food, with our body image. We have relationships with things. So yeah, we sometimes need to just take a break and take a step back and reevaluate and come back even stronger. Absolutely. You always will come back, you know, well, it's rare that you don't come back stronger. Because right. if you decide to come back, you know, you come back still. Yeah, right. And you I imagine that it would be better. Well, and even like you said, your weekend warriors, you know, what we did when we were 20 or 30, we can't do in our 40s and our 50s. But I, I don't say that. I say that respectfully, meaning once our body is in shape, we don't have to take it to the point of diminishing returns. You know, there's a physiology and a science to, as you well know, to muscle development, right? It gets torn down. They need to have time to build it back up. We can get stronger and stronger. But once we are at a pinnacle with our strength, our mental is going to take us further to the next level than doing an extra push up or an extra sit up. You know, our physical ability won't change from moment to moment. Even seven days, it takes seven days for the muscles to even start to say, okay, I'm going to deteriorate. Yes, as we get older, it's a little quicker. But as an average, it's about seven days. 
So, you know, if our, if our performance is um, where we're at, the mental is the one that's gonna just take us to the next level. Right, you know, it's interesting, and I wonder what you think about this or where you think you could help with this. So I, I've been doing this 14 years, and I'm also a, a young athlete. I started being athletic very young, and I remember my coaches and, and how they would coach me. And I remember at a young age, at least for me, um, my coaches were really, really harsh. Like I couldn't leave the soccer field until I had like a rash on my thigh from sliding so many times. And, yeah. and you know, you're, 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 Timmy, get back out on the field. There were two hour practices, five, six days a week. I mean, it was gnarly. And, and I mean, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. I was very close to my coaches. My coaches were like my family because um, I traveled with them and it was a big part of my life. And then when I became a, a, an actual coach myself, a lot of my clients were, were young and not necessarily weekend warriors. And by weekend warriors, let me explain that to our audience. Weekend warriors, there's so many events that take place now where anybody can sign up. And by anybody, I mean, there's no, there's no age limit. Like there's not, it's, it's generally things that, that people can, can be a part of no matter what their age is. And now on weekends, I mean, we're in a weird time right now specifically, but generally on weekends, there's 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons, marathons. Um, right now we're seeing virtual competitions. There's, um, you know, functional fitness competitions and you're, you know, Spartan races, you're seeing these companies pop up because there's, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, a an industry that's growing at 500% a year. So it's a yeah. really fast growing industry where people want a medal. They want a t-shirt. They want a sense of accomplishment. There's clearly something mental going on there where there's this huge yeah. influx of weekend warriors. And so my coaching has shifted to that very population. So my gym in particular and those who I coach are very much part of this weekend warrior mentality. So it's not this young athlete. It's this maybe, I would say my average athlete at my gym is probably in their 40s. Um, I'm, in, I'm 40 myself. And it's a lot of, you know, moms, dads, um, ex-military, um, uh, just, just either used to be an athlete or always wanted to be an athlete. And it's this beginner, intermediate, advanced. It doesn't matter your level, but the commonality is this need to uh, have a goal that's very performance based. And there's this need to feel like like Shira, like or or like you know, like like a soldier, like like a badass. And it's different than I used to deal with a lot of weight loss when I first got into the industry, or just physique. A lot of people that just wanted to look yeah. good. So for me, it's been my most fun. In, in, in this line of work. And it's really interesting having kind of this new population of athletes. And for me, this seems like the perfect thing because I, th I think it is different when we're older. I think the obstacles are different. And I just, I'm curious from you, what do you think, how do you think you could help kind of this weekend warrior? Or what, what are some things you would anticipate would come up? Or if you already have some, what do you see already in this kind of new world? Well, I think one thing that's important that I'd like to address, which I would like to give all your clients to, you know, it's a, it's a four part question to keep them from burning out and keeping them motivated. So this is a tool right now. Cause like you said, there's so many, I want to make sure I say this because there's so many races when we get back to that, it is, it's true. It's asking yourself, why do I have to do so many races? Because there is a, is there, there's a balance, right? That's there's so a point true. of diminishing returns, especially in this field especially in the marathon runners, the 5Ks. I, I started out with them. That's the main athlete that I started working with. Super fun group of people because there's so much you can do with your mind on marathon. I mean, you're, it's just you. You're with yourself the whole time. You got to like yourself because you're running with yourself, right? So, but one thing I want to say is no matter what age, but to keep them motivated at 40, 30, 40, whatever, whatever age is, whenever you're doing a lot of training, or a lot of um, competitions. Did I have fun? What did I learn? What did I do well? And what can I work on? So every single time you have an event or something like that, those four questions will keep you motivated. They keep your brain in an open, creative, active, engaging state. If that makes any sense to you, but it keeps that so that you're not like, oh my God, I sucked. I didn't do that. That negative self doesn't talk, doesn't come in. Because I'll tell you, there's no room for it. Life is way too short for that stuff. Um, 
but really helping the the what I do is I help people get out of get out of their own flipping way. Like get out of your way so you can do what you want to do to the best of your ability. And that's also, you know, that goes to my core belief in my life is I believe that everyone's life is the most precious gift you will ever receive and use it to your best of your ability and your potential, no matter what you do. That's just a belief I've always had is that kind of permeates my, uh, my whole, my whole job, but your clients is helping them, you know, enjoy their sport, helping them waken up to their performance. Like, what is my brain doing? Is it helping me? Is it hurting me? Or am I even using it at all? Or am I just kind of sludging through my workouts? Am I shoving myself? Am I making myself go? Because that's not fun. That's not fun. So right. it's, it's, it's helping them enjoy their sport and use their brain to, the, to enhance their performances as opposed to hurting them or neutrals doing nothing at all, having lazy brain. Right, and I love that you make the word color because I think that a lot of it is, you know, you, you've said it a lot in this in this podcast, which I think is really important. Which is this 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 um, you just need to have fun. You need to enjoy what you do. I I, mean, I I see that common theme here. And how do we get back to that? Just like your swimmer, I mean, that really kind of takes it full circle. How do you get back to enjoying what you're doing? And not just doing it to check a box or because for somebody else or really getting to the bottom of, of why it's bringing you joy and happiness and how that's ultimately helping and serving your life in a positive way. Um, you know, and I love that you said get out of your own way. I mean, that's really where, you know, the mental piece comes in, you know, we're, 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 a lot of us do get in our own way. You know, it isn't any, it really isn't anybody else because you're only in control of yourself. Nobody's in control of you. So it really, if something is getting in your way, it, it is you, <laughs> right? I mean, it can't be anybody else. You can't, right. And taking, that's the other thing, a huge thing is take responsibility for your performance. Right. It's not your coach. It's not your kids. It's not your boss. It's right. not the weather, not the umpire, right? Just take control. Right. It's not sports is not a fair playing field, and every day can be different. So what? Right. Perfect. I love that. Take responsibility. Sense. That's that's a good. That's a good. That's a good thing for life. Take responsibility. Yes. <laughs> and, and there are no mistakes. There are no mistakes. You learn for, if you learn from it. There was not a mistake. So I always say there's no there's no perfection. There's perfect moments. There are no mistakes. There's just learning opportunities. Take anything you can do to take the pressure off. Right. Will make you perform better. Right. So it really does it really does behoove you to take the pressure off or to see it not not beat yourself up, not see it as mistakes. Right. Right. It's um, and it's training the brain. It's like sometimes right. making the brain advice to keep the other crap out. Literally saying, No, I'm not even gonna go there. You it's know? like you have to train your brain somewhat like I make training plans for the body. It's like you have to yes to have training plans for the brain as well. And the two go together. So you really shouldn't do one without the other. No, they're, they're, it's almost impossible. So if, you're, if you can't imagine something in your brain, how do you expect your body to execute it, right? So if you can't sit and visualize an amazing, spectacular performance and have fun with it and let go, like let go, and that's a life lesson, let go of stuff, forgive, all of that stuff, it's all interrelated. If you can't do that with your performance and, you know, how can you expect your body to do it? Yeah. You know, if you can't imagine up here, how's it going to come out in your performance? Yeah. So. You know, and it's, it's very clear in this conversation too, how much your performance or your athleticism or what you're doing as an athlete truly relates to your everyday life. I mean, all of these things really relate to, I think our everyday life as well, you know, taking right. responsibility, getting out of your own way, understanding that there's always a learning opportunity if you can perceive it that way. Um, yeah. you know, and it's interesting because a, a lot of our sport, um, a lot of my audience, our main sport is obstacle course racing. So there's literally obstacles in your way that you have to get over. Yes. And we it's, always say yeah. that it's such a, you know, there's such a connection to our life, which I think is why so many people, I mean, it's such a fast growing sport. And I, I truly think that that has to be a part of it. And in coaching, you always say, visualize yourself getting over the wall. Visualize yourself hitting the spear. If you, if, you, if you go into it going, I can't get over that wall, well, what are you telling your body? Like, well, yeah, then how's your body supposed to get over the wall? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, and even having a plan. So even talking to you, right. you know, even having a mental plan for every obstacle. Okay, I know what I'm doing physically. I know I'm gonna how I'm gonna attack it physically. How am I gonna attack it mentally? Right. Where's my brain? And so, I mean, I just worked with a musician and she had to um, to record an album. So we, you know, I said, first of all, get all intimately familiar with every single song. So it comes next, second nature, just like the obstacle course. Become intimately familiar with that obstacle course. Live, breathe, dream that obstacle course. Love that obstacle course. And then for every obstacle, and like for her, for every song, what's going to be your mindset? What is? And so we developed a whole entire plan for the whole recording. It's beautiful. And you do that with athletes too. What is your plan? When this obstacle comes up, what are you going to do? And that's right. It's metaphorical. You know, all those obstacles, you could do the whole journey could be your life. And you and I both know that when we do that stuff, it is, it's like you go through a whole, like when you do a 20 mile hike, you've g gone through a complete journey. Your brain has been a journey the whole way. Right. Like marathon runners, you know, do, 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 what the, okay. You know, totally. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a so, lot of time by yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Gotta like yourself. It's a lot of time in your head. It's you true. Hug yourself when you're running, do some, you know, anything. Right. Count backwards, anything to trick the mind, play with the mind, open the mind, and you'll perform. Right. Well, Talise, I love it all. Um, it it it's, makes so much sense, and um, it you know it really goes hand in hand with uh, with everything that I do, and and just in talking to you, it goes hand in hand with everything that I see and that I even face personally. So it's um, you know it, it makes a lot of sense the connection and. Um, Guys, what I'll do before we hop out on with Talise, and I'll add it to the bottom of this, is I'll give you her information so you can even contact her on your own, and then her and I will get together for kind of uh, things that we can do together going forward with, with all of you. But I'll definitely make sure her, her information is on here as well, so you guys can also have access to her on your own. Um, Talise, thank you so much for being on today. Thank you, Timmy. I really Thank you. It's been a pleasure. I love this. As you know, We obviously like what we do love what we do you yeah. know so it's very fun true as you guys fun. know we could talise and i could probably talk forever because I know. <laughs> it's what happens when you love what you do <laughs> i know and you're like oh my god you and that you do because it's it's so exciting it's i just don't know how anyone doesn't use the mental to it, it, it you can't ignore it you know right. yeah i mean you can but it's not going to get you very far <laughs> no it's gonna no, it'll get you, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, you really do have to pay attention to it. And, and, and that's really where I think a lot of the growth and progress and where, pe where, where you really find fulfillment in your life is when, I, I always say, when you do the work, mentally, yeah. mentally and physically, you have to do the work. That's how we get better. That's how we have more enjoyment. That's how we have more fun. You, you've got to put some time in. And, um, well, yeah. And I, because I give homework too. Yeah, homework, because you got to do the work, you know, it's, you the same, do it's, the work. Again, it's the same with training, you know, I can't have an athlete get to a certain place physically unless they do the work. And I always tell them, I might program you, I might ask you the right questions, but you're the one that's doing it. I'm not doing it for you. So right. if you're getting somewhere, if you're getting first place, if you're crossing that finish line on a run you never thought you could do, on a race you never thought you could do, if you're getting on podium in that competition, you're doing it. I might guide you. But you're absolutely the one doing it. So that's got to mean something, you know? Right. We're catalysts, you know? Yeah. Right. So, okay, guys, thank you again, Talise. Um, thank, thank you guys for, for, for uh, listening in. And again, I'll get you more information and um, have a great rest of your day. Bye.